pretty much exactly demonstrates why I wanted to build a fan car. Downforce at zero velocity. Obviously with dragsters, tractions, everything, and you can add wings and spoilers to try to keep the car on the ground. But the problem with all of these aerodynamic elements is they only work when the car is actually moving. When I first saw the McMurdy Spearling launch at uh, Goodwood, my jaw just dropped. I mean, it was just instant acceleration and zero wheel spin. And that's exactly what a fan car is. As soon as I saw it, I was like, wow, I need to build something like that. Um, I'd seen Engineering After Hours and Project Air YouTube channels have impressive results with fan power downforce, but they also had all of the typical challenges that you face with a fan car. So I thought, what can I do to actually improve on what they've already tried? And one of the key challenges I saw facing their RC fan cars was that they utilized off the shelf electric ducted axial fan motors. These EDFs as they're called are used for RC airplanes and they move an immense amount of air but they operate at a relatively small pressure differential between the inlet and outlet of the fan, somewhere around two to 5% difference. Uh, this means that they can't create a massive pressure difference under the car. And this started me researching more about fans and in particular, the characteristics of mixed flow fans, which really caught my eye when I was reading these white papers. For those of you who are fan curious, a mixed flow fan is a hybrid between an axial fan and a radial fan or a centrifugal fan. The mixed flow fans flow less air, but they can operate at a much larger pressure differential than an axial fan with an increase in pressures between 20 and 40% between the inlet and outlet. So that's possibly as much as eight times more suction force than an EDF. So you can see in this picture on the left, an axial fan, which is very similar to an EDF. The air passes straight through the fan and because you're not changing the air direction, you're actually moving a large volume of air relatively efficiently. On the right, we have a centrifugal fan where you're pulling the air in parallel to the axis of rotation and then exhausting it out perpendicularly. And because you're changing the direction of the air and adding energy to the flow by accelerating the air outward, you can create a lot more pressure. Some of these fans have a delta P between two and four. So orders of magnitude more pressure, but far less overall flow. A mixed flow fan, as the name implies, moves the air in a combination of axial and radial directions as it passes through the fan. Because of this design, you actually get the benefits of both of those types of fans and actually performs a little bit better than you would expect. Air enters the fan in the middle, parallel to the fan's rotational axis, and then it gets pushed outward. What's different is the air isn't turned a full 90 degrees. Typically a mixed flow fan turns the air less than 45 degrees, uh, but this fan is actually closer to 55 degrees just due to packaging. This gives us a combination of the high flow that you would see with the axial fan, but you still have these nice long swept blades that add kinetic energy to the flow. And this allows for the fan to operate a much higher pressure ratio. So obviously aerodynamics are everything for this car. And I worked with AirShaper, a company that provides a super easy to use cloud-based CFD service. You can literally take your CAD or STL files and upload them to their website and easily kick off a CFD simulation in under five minutes. And AirShaper has just recently added the ability to simulate internal flows, which was a real game changer for designing several aspects of this car. So one thing I quickly realized with CFD simulations was that fan cars work much more effectively if you have something like a flexible seal to try to minimize the air leakage around the uh, edges of the car's underfloor. Some full-size race cars like the Chaparral 2J used straight skirts that pushed against the ground. Obviously these skirts wore out fairly quickly and the straight skirt unfortunately doesn't handle really uneven ground well, which is very difficult at the RC car scale. I've seen some cars that used a flexible flap skirt, which conforms well to the ground. But again, at the RC car scale, it tends to create a lot of friction since it's being sucked so hard into the pavement. So the McMurdy Spearling uses the cool metal ceramic composite type material to actually make up the sliders as part of the skirt for the underfloor. Unfortunately, it's 
rather expensive, probably be at least a few hundred dollars even for something the size of this RC car. So for now, that's kind of out of the budget. Since this is just a prototype, I decided to try a non-contact type of seal, which I'm trying to actually seal using vortices, similar to what you would find in a gas seal with the goal of making the car less sensitive to irregularities in the ground and keeping the friction as low as possible. With Air Shaper's help, I was quickly able to create a series of slices of the seal profile to actually simulate the airflow around different profiles to actually determine their effectiveness. Just for comparison's sake, adding a skirt versus no skirt increases downforce by at least 9x. And adding a rectangular skirt versus a vortex ceiling skirt design uh, both with the same amount of ground clearance. The vortex inducing skirt generates a little over 5% more downforce, so not a lot more. But if that gap to the ground is increased even by two millimeters, my skirt design tends to outperform the straight skirt by about 30%. And now, obviously, if you can actually get a seal to touch the ground, you're going to get exponentially higher downforce. So once I had a couple of different skirt profiles and a couple of different uh, turbine designs for the fan, I went into Air Shaper and actually was able to simulate the overall flows around the entire car with the fan running and output all of the forces acting on the car. It was super easy to do. All I had to do was specify the uh, fan as a propeller and then actually just set its RPM and rotation direction. And then I was able to run the simulation and it output all the force data for that overall fan and floor combination, which was incredibly useful. The data showed right away that I had far too large of a fan and that I was able to cut a lot of weight out of the car by going with a smaller fan and motor both and still have more downforce than I was going to be able to use in an RC car. I also tweaked the shape and the overall area of the floor. As you can see in this initial prototype that I had printed out prior to CFD testing, I had a significantly smaller floor area because I was overly concerned with seal leakage versus the area of the floor. That was completely the wrong direction. CFD clearly showed that the answer is you do your best to minimize the seal length, but the bigger your floor, the more area you have for the low pressure to actually act on the car. And it's exponentially more effective than actually worrying about the length of your seal. So I also know this is going to come up in the comments. So I just wanted to go ahead and address it. The fan does produce some direct downforce by throwing the air directly straight up. But it's actually barely anything. I thought it was going to be a higher number, but it, it's not. Under best case scenarios where the fan inlet is actually wide open, uh, so we're taking in a ton of air into the fan, the most force I saw was 56 grams. In comparison, the total low pressure on the bottom side of the car is approaching two and a half kilograms. So the flow pressure under the car is vastly more effective. You can see though that throwing all of the air straight up out of the fan does create a huge amount of drag. So it's probably safe to say it's actually probably better to duct that air rearwards rather than just throwing it up into the air and gaining that extra 50 some odd grams of downforce. Now, of course, the car didn't work on the first try. To keep things simple and to keep the ride height consistent, the car has no suspension. But the car generated more downforce than I was expecting and the chassis, well, it just wasn't even close to up to the task. So I designed a bunch of different reinforcements for the frame and I glued them onto the car, tested it out, still wasn't enough. So I made even bigger reinforcements. Then as the frame actually got stiffer, then I ran into problems with the tires. Then the tires actually started to compress. And so then I had to add some TPU inner liners for the rear wheels to actually stiffen them up. So the last issue I was facing was with the seal and the distance between the ground. Obviously, if the chassis is bending or the tires are compressing or anything happens that allows the skirt seal to get closer to the ground, the downforce begins to go up exponentially just as that gap starts to close and get smaller. The seal just gets better. 
but if the skirt gets too close to the ground, the car is gonna just bend and suck itself to the ground and there's no moving it. To prevent this from happening, I had to actually add an adjustable mechanical pressure relief valve. I just have a screw with a spring from a pen that holds the valve shut, and by adjusting the length of the screw, I can keep the pressure under the car from getting too low. Basically, if the pressure gets too low, the valve opens up and we release some of that low pressure. So it keeps it much more consistent, actually, so this is the actual finished car, and I know what you're thinking, this wiring looks amazing. Real motorsports quality stuff, but it does actually work. The setup is real simple. I have a six channel receiver here and two ESCs, one for the drive motor and the other for the fan motor. This allows me to control the fan speed with just a knob on the transmitter. Now, for the first test on the car, I wanted to drive it on the ceiling, but the downforce is just too far back on the car, and I know the front end will just fall off, but I am going to try it with a smaller battery and let's see if it'll actually drive up at least a vertical wall. So as you can see, it actually does drive up the piece of wood. It doesn't have any real issues. If the tires spin at all, obviously you, you're going from you know your static friction to your dynamic friction and it, it starts to slip. So let's try out the car for what it's actually designed to do, straight line acceleration. With the fan off, it's kind of hard to manage the wheel spin and you can't go full throttle right away. With the fan on at full speed, it becomes a whole different car. It's almost comical how much traction it has. You can just mash the throttle as hard as you want and the car just takes off and drives perfectly straight, even on this really smooth concrete. No wheel spin whatsoever and the car is not traction limited in any way. Wow. So reviewing the footage of the acceleration test shows that with the fan on, the car actually pulls three plus Gs of acceleration from a dead stop. And that's on, like I said, a smooth unprepped surface with cheap Amazon RC car tires. Now I initially designed this car around this particular motor, but this larger motor should fit and with this motor, the car should hit 70 plus miles per hour if the gears actually can hold up. Well, it's pretty clear this motor has a lot more torque and can easily overpower the rear tires. This is not the most stable car. Uh, the car is almost impossible to launch. Uh, I tightened down the pressure relief valve to try and get more downforce, but ultimately the frame just can't handle it and the skirt ends up rubbing the ground when I try to do that. After 40 plus attempts or so, I finally got a couple of decent runs out of the car. I had issues with my GPS, but on the two good runs, based on the motor RPM and also the spacing of the actual parking spaces in the parking lot, the car hits 60 miles per hour, somewhere between 1.6 and 2 seconds. 
I know that's not super accurate, but I know it's very quick. Ultimately, I had to stop testing because the fan finally ate too many rocks. And as you can see, it's not in great shape anymore. Overall, it was a fun project and I think that there is still so much more potential for an RC fan car with stickier tires, a decent chassis, a better skirt system, and maybe traction control, a sub one second, zero to 60 miles per hour is absolutely possible. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process behind this car. And if you've got any questions or ideas, drop them in the comments. Uh, thanks again to Airshaper for all the help with the CFD and the design on the fans and the overall car as well. Thanks for watching. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe.